imagine when you're sick and your mom gives you medicine and tells you, here, take this, it will all feel better after. But what if that medicine was the thing that was actually making you sick and causing you to slowly die? Today, or, and I have been researching and analyzing data for the past week about Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Today, in my informative speech, I will define what it is, common fake signs, provide case reports, and explain why it is so hard for doctors to diagnose. Before you define Munchausen syndrome by proxy, you have to define what Munchausen syndrome is. In the article, Munchausen syndrome by proxy and Munchausen, and Munchausen syndrome, a narrative review by Sua Philo et al. It clearly defines them. So Munchausen syndrome is a factitious disorder characterized by fabrication or induction of signs and symptoms of a disease. In simpler terms, that's when a person pretends that they are sick and seeks treatment with no personal gain. Munchausen syndrome by proxy is was first defined in, 1970s, in 1997 by Dr. Roy Meadow. It was used to describe children whose mothers produce histories of illness to their child and who support such history by fabricated physical signs or even by altercation of laboratory tests. To dumb it down, Munchausen syndrome by proxy is when a parent fakes an illness in their kid and seeks medical treatment. So now you know what Munchausen syndrome by proxy is. But you may be wondering how parents can fake these symptoms in their kids and fool the well-educated doctors. The answer may be a little bit more disturbing than you may think. In the article, Munchausen Syndrome by Proxy by Roy Meta, it takes information about 19 kids, all under the age of seven, from 17 different families. There was a total of 40 different fabricated signs in these children. Bleeding being the most common, then neurological, such as comas, seizures, and unsteadiness in seven, Rashes in six, glyceria in five, fevers in four, biochemical chaos also in four, and vomiting in two. From the article Munchausen syndrome and proxy and alarming face of child abuse by Gawalt et al., it shows a case of a nine year old boy from India. He was brought to a hospital by his father and uncle with complaints of hematesis, which is vomiting blood. He came in with those symptoms occurring for over one year. Hematesis can be as serious as internal bleeding, so the boy went through many invasive procedures before Munchausen's by proxy was diagnosed. He was then placed into his mother's care only. To get these symptoms, parents have to fake or do something to their child in order to get these <coughs> symptoms to appear. This can be by adding blood, poisoning them, not feeding them, or just by lying to the doctors. Although this nine-year-old boy's case was terrible, it was not the most extreme case of Munchausen's by proxy. Hopi Barr had one of the more extreme cases. This case report was taken from the podcast, Armchair Expert Andrea Dunlop, on Munchausen's by proxy, the speaker by the speaker Andrea Dunlop. Hopi Barr had an extreme case of Munchausen's syndrome when she was a child, where she was faking it in herself. Her childhood was relatively normal. She was a normal, smart, popular girl with no trauma, and there was no clue as to why she developed Munchausen. She did many things growing up, such as she had many surgeries for no reason. She faked back and knee issues. She even claimed to not being able to walk for a period of time in high school. She made doctors put a cochlear implant in her ear while she was able to hear perfectly fine. When she got older, she faked a PhD in chemistry. She got a job at the lab where she was the lead chemist, giving her a lot of different access to different chemicals. She faked having an eight year long cancer journey that was on and off, and she never had cancer. She also faked having the miscarriage of two twin girls, and she was never pregnant. When Hope had children, the abuse seemed to get worse. Hope had four children. The first one was a boy. He showed no signs of Munchausen's by proxy. Some people thought it was because he was a boy and she didn't inflict it on him because of the gender differences. The infliction 
but she started to inflict the deception of this disease on her second child. She claimed that she had cerebral palsy and seeked medical treatment. When her third kid was born, <coughs> sorry, when her third kid was born, she was although born early was very healthy and a very active kid. She also showed no signs of Munchausen syndrome. Her youngest kid took the brunt of the abuse. She was an extremely premature baby. And although it was not proven, but suspected that Hope got her hands on Pitocin and self-induced labor. Premature babies are known to have a lot of issues. So when Hope's daughter had a lot of issues, the doctors did not suspect much of it. One of these issues being that she was severely anemic, but that was really because Hope was not feeding her. It got to a point where doctors had to put a port in her chest to be able to give her daughter more nutrients quicker and go straight into her system. However, the port in her chest was extremely dangerous in the hands of Hope. Hope began taking blood out of, from the port of her chest and depriving her daughter of much needed nutrients, making her sicker and sicker. She went to the hospital one time claiming that she was having a very severe <coughs> anemic reaction. She convinced the doctors to put, to give her daughter a very, do, a very harmful dose of a drug, which then caused her to have a severe reaction to it. She even claimed that she was, had the most terminal type of cystic fibrosis. She played into the part by going to cherry walks and doing stuff like that. Hope's lie finally caught up to her when she claimed her cancer was back for the third time. When doctors were trying to treat her, they showed no evidence of her having cancer, so they confronted her. Hope was then investigated, arrested, and sent to jail for 10 years. So why did it take Hope so long to get caught? There's a lot of issues to do from doctors when it comes to Munchausen's by Rossi. In another bad case, taken from the article, a serial Munchausen syndrome by proxy by you know et al., a mother killed two of her kids before getting diagnosed. A quote from the article ABC of Child Abuse by Roy Meadow can give us a reason as to why it is so hard for doctors to incriminate these mothers. Meadow says, persist in claiming that their healthy child is ill, and if each doctor in turn refuses an in further investigation, they consult yet another doctor. It's hard for doctors to help when the perpetrator keeps moving from place to place and never stays long enough to get caught. Now you have learned the definition of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. What are some of the common fake signs? Know a few case reports and have an understanding of why it is so hard to diagnose. This may not directly impact your life, but it could end someone else's. My name is Ellery Chuck, and thank you for listening to my speech.